Hi guys, going to talk to you uh, in this video about twiddling and uh, what's involved. Uh, throughout the course itself, um, I'm going to talk a lot about twiddling um, at, at different times. Um, it'll come up in a lot of match tactics and um, other areas um, basically ongoing through the course. Um, before we get into those areas, it's, it's beneficial, I think, just to have a, uh, an overview of twiddling itself. So in this video, what I'm going to look at is basically um, what is twiddling, uh, the benefits of twiddling, um, you know, the pros, what's, what's the reasons why you'd want to twiddle, uh, what are some of the cons, what are some of the disadvantages of twiddling, because um, there certainly are a few of those too that you have to keep in mind. Uh, also, I'll talk about whether you should twiddle, uh, what my recommendations are on that, uh, talk a little bit about how to twiddle, and actually make the twiddle happen and finally talk about just some uh, some general tips again at a fairly high level so what we're really what I'm just trying to do here is basically give you uh, a brief introduction to the whole idea of twiddling itself and um, to just give you an easy way for those of you who have never really considered it much before give you an easy way to find out what it's all about and possibly for some of those of you who have um, have doing are doing it or have thought about it, uh, just give you my thoughts on the matter, just to add to your own experiences and uh, you know, give you another perspective, basically, on, on the whole scene of twiddling itself. So, to start with, what is twiddling? Okay, well, to let, let's just keep things simple. Basically, the idea behind twiddling is that for any bat, such as the bat that I've got here, um, where I've got an inverted rubber on one side, and in this case a long pips on the other side, uh, it's really a case of any bat that has two different surfaces that are noticeably different um, as far as your opponent is concerned. Uh, any bat like that which has two different types of surfaces, twiddling is the idea of being able to change the surface on each side so that on your forehand you can use the red or the black, on the backhand use either side, um, that's for a shake hander. For a pen hold grip obviously with the forehand at the, uh, say here the inverted on the front, twiddling involves somehow getting to the back of your bat and being able to use it. Now whether that's from an actual twiddle just using the fingers or whether it's from flipping your wrist over to use the back. Either way, when I talk about that, that's still what I mean by twiddling. Uh, finally, with say someone like a similar gripper, who's got that finger quite often hooked around the, um, the index finger hooked around the bat, uh, where you can use the forehand and just turn the bat over, punch with the backhand. Twiddling would then be, in this case, for a similar gripper, really just turning the bat around to hit hit an almost a conventional backhand um, within the limitations of the grip itself. So really when we're talking about twiddling, uh, what I'll be talking about is, is just discussing uh, getting the unconventional, getting the other side of the bat to what would normally be expected involved in the, in the play and getting access to the other side of the bat. Um, as an inverted long pit player who uses shake hand grip, for me, it involves just a quick flip of, uh, of the bat. And later on, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of a close-up of that uh, just to um, run you through it and show you how that's done as well. Uh, I will show you the pen hold as well. We don't expect any speed because really uh, I'm not exactly lightning fast at the pen hold twiddle. I've never had cause to learn it. And we'll, we'll take a demo video off YouTube to um, just show you how someone who's really very fast can do it. Um, similar grip as well, okay, you guys, fairly simple. You can just punch, turn the wrist over, or if you really, really wanted to, you could just do a, a twiddle, um, like a shake hand up by getting the finger out of the way. So that's what we're talking about. That's what I'm, when I'm referring to you to twiddling, I'm really just referring to that practice of getting the unexpected side of the bat to use. Okay, so just while I get my notes together here, I don't want to miss anything out. What 
what I want to talk about next is let's talk about what are the benefits of twiddling. So what are the reasons um, for the, the actual usage of twiddling? Why would you want to twiddle? And there are a number of reasons that are in favour of, of doing this, um, especially for those of us who are using well, you know, real combination bats where one side is markedly different from the other. Um, you know, there's a, when there's a very big contrast between the surfaces, then the reasons for twiddling become even more important. Uh, now, to start with, the sort of thing that the benefits that you'll get from twiddling. Firstly, you can affect your opponent's timing and his rhythm by twiddling. Okay, what you're doing is you're constantly or occasionally changing between the rubber surfaces of the inverted and the junk side, if I can be so bold as to call it the junk side, but basically the, the long pip or the anti-spin or the short pip side. Uh, what you're doing is you can affect his timing and you can affect your opponent's rhythm. And if you do that successfully, what that's going to do is that's going to affect his game, hopefully make him more hesitant um, during the points, uh, which will affect his ability to uh, play against you with power, if you can break up his rhythm and uh, stop him from playing smoothly, that's a plus for you as well. So taking him out of his, his zone and basically jerking him and making him, the ball's coming, the ball's not coming, the ball's spinning one way, it's not spinning one way. All of these things take him out of just that easy zone of play, force him to think. And if you can break up an opponent's rhythm like that, well that's definitely a plus. So that's one advantage of twiddling. Uh, by using uh, long pips, anti-spin, uh, even to an extent short pips, what you're using for a lot, a lot of people, it's a relatively unfamiliar surface and to a, a great extent uh, a misunderstood surface or just a not understood surface even. So what you're doing um, to, against a lot of opponents is you're actually using something that's fairly unfamiliar. Um, sometimes they will say unpredictable. It's not really unpredictable with today's um, rubbers, but from their point of view it's unpredictable because they don't know what's really going on. And having that ability to, um, I guess, confuse your opponent and uh, help him make, force him to make mistakes by using a surface that he's not familiar with or he doesn't understand, well, that's obviously a benefit. And by being able to twiddle, what you're then able to do is bring in that variation on either side at unexpected times. And if your opponent's not watching too closely, he may simply straight away make a mistake. So twiddling in this case allows us more options in getting the unfamiliar side uh, in effect against your opponent. So that's another plus for twiddling. Um, good use of twiddling. Uh, may also make your opponent uh, guess the wrong way about which side you used to hit the ball. So it's a deceptive component to twiddling. And that if your opponent's not paying attention, he may miss you take the bat back with maybe the red, but come back with the black. And if he doesn't pay attention to the sound of the ball, or if, say, you're using an, uh, an anti-spin that sounds similar to your inverted, he may not notice at all. Um, that you've actually used a different, a different basically rubber and that may lead to a mistake right there and then. So there's definitely a deceptive ability in twiddling where you may, especially say underneath the table, if you bring the bat underneath, twiddle, bring it back the other way, your opponent may be deceived. Uh, or if you play the stroke from under the table where he can't see it and twiddle, again that's very tough on the opponent. So, yeah, definitely the deceptive aspects of twiddling are um, a definite benefit. Uh, of course, all right, frustrating the opponent. Well, naturally, um, I think we all find that, is that there are certain people who um, just find, they hate the idea of playing long pips, they don't like long pips, they don't like anti-spin, they don't like short pips. All they want is inverted rubber and basically if you're a... Uh, someone using one of these alternative junk rubbers, um, you're one step ahead already because they're already, don't think you're a table tennis player and don't really want to play you and don't like to concentrate against you. 
So in those kind of cases, um, by forcing them to not only play against your, uh, I guess, junk rubber, uh, but forcing them to also have to keep track of which side it's on, you're making things worse. It's like pouring, um, <laughs> it's like giving them a paper cut and pouring lemon juice into it. It's like it's aggravating it because not only are they having to deal with the unfamiliar surface or the surface that they don't like, they're also having to deal with you twiddling it and that's likely to make them even more aggravated, more frustrated and the more of that they get, the better our chances are. So that's a good thing. Uh, another reason for twiddling is that by use of intelligent twiddling you can use the I keep calling it junk rubber, it's just because it's, it's convenient for me to say that because it, junk rubber kind of encompasses anti-spin, long pips, medium pips to an extent short pips, even though you know, I wouldn't call them junk rubber but it, it's really alternative rubbers, I suppose is just a good term uh, but basically by intelligent twiddling we can use our alternative rubber to control um, aggressive, hard to handle attacks so if, say you're stuck up right at the table, your opponent bring, brings in a big power loop and rather than say play it on your forehand with the inverted rubber and really maybe struggle to control the power, you may just twiddle to the long pips with the ante and let the ante spin all the long pips, just send that ball back with all his spin back to him and handle it that way. Especially if you've got something with some dead sponge underneath it, a, a really dead ante spin or a dead long pips. Um, in those sort of cases, that's your safe option um, to get the long pips or the anti-spin onto that power ball and just softly go back. I know defensively as a long range chopper, when someone brings on that really the big loop, the big power loop, and I'm thinking this could be tough to handle, sometimes I will just twiddle to the long pips, play a nice safe easy ball, um, which you can see in some of the, uh, the videos that I've got, just the standard chop. Just being able to, to go to the long pips, do a standard chop and send it right back to him um, without me having to think too much about what spins on the ball. That's a great benefit. It gives us a safe side with which to control awkward attacks that would be possibly a bit difficult for us to deal with with our inverted rubber. So that ability to have a safe side that we can get to on either side by just a quick twiddle, great advantage of twiddling. Um, okay, to keep your opponent on his toes, definitely. That kind of goes with the frustrating of the opponent, uh, but it's more than that. It's also for, for opponents who aren't used to playing uh, long pips or anti-spin, aren't used to playing people who twiddle, what you're then doing is you're forcing them to concentrate and watch you a lot harder than they normally have to do. It's unfamiliar territory. And what you're then doing is there's going to be this element of mental fatigue creeping into their game, especially as the match goes on. Because you're making them watch harder than they're used to, make more decisions than they're used to, and invariably, towards the end of the match, they're going to start feeling the strain of that because unless they've done it a lot, um, it gets mentally tiring to keep focused and concentrate on that. Um, people's attention span isn't always that long. So that's a definite benefit in that you can sometimes wear down your opponent's mental freshness and sometimes by the end of the match they're just, you know, they're physically fit but they're mentally spent and you just roll right over the top of them because they can't um, focus anymore and can't make good decisions anymore and you can see that quite often. Uh, another benefit is, of course, by use of twiddling, um, we can slow down the pace of the game. Now, obviously, you can do that with just um, using your alternative rubber on one side, but twiddling then allows you, on either side, to slow down the pace of the game whenever you wish. And that can be important for some of us who are sometimes getting a bit older and slower. Um, we can dictate the pace at which the game takes place a lot more than if we weren't twiddling and then our opponent knows every time he can get at your inverted rubber he's going to get a certain pace back. By being able to twiddle you're able to take away that pace at will and you'll be controlling pace of the match much more.
which is very important. It's very handy to be able to do that. And that's a definite be benefit for twiddling, um, especially when you're thinking in terms of being able to access that ability to change pace. You could do that possibly by just chicken winging and just basically trying to cover everything. But quite often that will get you out of position and the ability to just be able to turn it and not, not sacrifice balance or positioning is a real benefit. So change of pace, yeah, definite benefit from uh, being able to twiddle. Uh, you can set up your own attacks more easily. And for those of us who are a little bit aggressively minded and don't just want to play um, putting the ball back and hoping to get a mistake from your opponent's attacks, for those of us who actually want to sort of like set up some points, set up an attacks of our own, or at least counter attacks, um, the ability to use the, um, the anti-spin side, the long pip side, but the ability to twiddle it is going to allow us to have more chances to use these to set up our attack, whether it's an inverted rubber attack or a long pip anti-spin attack. But twiddling gives you more options to do that. Um, it makes you a little bit more unpredictable, um, makes your opponent work a little bit harder, makes them a little bit hesitant. All these things tie in and what they result in is the ability for us as the combination bat users to hopefully set up some more aggressive options of our own. Um, again, because we're slowing down the pace when we want. And that's got to be a good thing, I think, to be able to do that, to be able to set up more attacks of your own when you want. Twiddling is going to help you with that because it's going to make life tougher for your opponents. Um, also, uh, another reason that ties in with that is that it doesn't give your opponent a safe side to play you to. Now, those of you who don't twiddle very much at all would, I no doubt, be aware of playing those opponents whose main strategy is to give you a float ball or at least the same ball, but quite often a float ball, but the same shot over and over and over again to your pips. Yeah. And they just pin you down on that, tie you down there and give you nothing to work off. Plus, quite often these guys, anytime you get them in trouble you know, and you actually start to set up a bit of an opportunity, first thing they'll do is give you that float ball back to the pips and you start again. You have to work the point again. And yeah, fair enough, that's an intelligent tactic on their part. But what is happening is because you're not twiddling, they've got basically a safe side where they know if they can get it there with no spin, you're not going to be able to do too much with it. And it's a safety zone on the table for them. Um, and that's something that um, we can avoid. Just that ability to twiddle your bat if someone's trying to tie you down or trying to use your long pips um, as a safe area. The ability, if the ball comes up a little bit higher, just to turn it and drive the ball or loop the ball with the inverted and make an attack and then turn back again to your normal game, your normal grip. That ability to do that is going to add points to your game. Firstly, because it takes away their safe option and it increases the pressure on your opponent. And that's a big thing. If your opponent suddenly realises that there is no safe place on that table, no guaranteed safe place, you're taking away an option, you're increasing the pressure. Secondly, what that usually goes with is the fact that he's got no safe place to go, he's also got no safe height to go. Because if you're always using the anti-spin of the long pips and you're not a big hitter with them, what's going to happen is he'll usually go safer and higher to your long pips or anti-spin and give himself margin for error. So he can give you a high ball knowing that he's safe in it. Whereas once you start to twiddle occasionally, you take away that margin for safety. He can't put the ball this high above the net. He has to get the ball lower because if he pop, puts it up high, you're capable of going straight from these, end, these long pips to take a backswing, twiddle and whack the ball with the other side. And that takes away his options. It increases the pressure on your opponent. And that's all through just the ability to basically turn your bat twice. When you see the ball come up high, on the back swing you turn the bat, you hit it, you turn the bat again, and you're back to normal. Uh, it's not a complicated pattern, but it's very effective, especially for those of you who hardly ever twiddle. Um, just that one 
one pattern alone of being able to basically say, okay, you're playing me to my long pip, to my anti-spin, you're playing big, high, safe balls that you know I'm not going to hit or do much with. Just that ability to go twiddle, hit, twiddle. Two twiddles, straight back in your normal mode, and you'll, you'll cut that out of his game because he suddenly won't have a safe side to go. And that will make a huge difference for you. Um, also, uh, just one final benefit I would mention, is on return of serve, um, mainly on return of serve because that's usually where it's most, um, most noticeable. Uh, when there's a noticeable amount of side spin on the ball, being able to twiddle, especially close to the table, usually on return of serve because that's when the side spin usually comes into play, having that ability to twiddle to the long pips so that you can essentially or to the anti spin, so you can essentially ignore the side spin that's on the ball is invaluable. Now it won't help you, I've got to point out, it won't help you with the amount of top spin or the amount of back spin. Okay? That's still important for you to know or have a rough idea of because you've got to get the right bat angle in terms of uh, and the right stroke, which as you've seen or as you will see from some of the videos in terms of dealing with float balls or backspin balls or topspin balls, um, you still have to get the right bat angle with long pips or with anti-spin. Um, they're a little bit more forgiving than inverted rubber, but um, still getting the bat angle right is important. But what you'll find though is on some of these side spin balls that are usually pretty heavy to control, you'll usually have maybe not a bad idea of it's backspin, it's topspin, and you're not quite very good at handling the side spin component. Well, as long as you get the, the top spin, back spin angle right, the side spin you can usually fairly much ignore and plop the ball back towards the centre of the table and you'll, you'll be pretty guaranteed that that's where it's going to go from a side spin point of view. Very, very handy um, just in terms of a tool for handling those ugly, awkward surfaces where, you just, where your opponent's side spin is making life very difficult for you. And that's another benefit of twiddling that if you didn't twiddle, you might have to try and get out here with the long pips and put yourself out of position to get the same benefit. So, as you can see, um, there are really a number of benefits to twiddling the bat. So you would think, well, why doesn't everybody twiddle um, who uses long pips or anti-spin? You know, or, or basically two different sides to the bat. Surely everybody would do it. Well, it's not as simple as that because, of course, along with any benefits, um, as we know in life, there's usually some drawbacks. And twiddling is no exception. There are definitely some drawbacks that go with twiddling. And that's what we're going to talk about now, is some of these drawbacks that you'll find um, will, you'll have to deal with if you decide to twiddle your back. So, what's the first um, drawback? For me, um, to an extent, I think one of the biggest drawbacks is firstly that um, if you decide to twiddle, what you're basically doing, uh, to a certain extent of course, but what, what's happening is you're doubling the amount of strokes that you have to play. Okay, So you have to have an inverted push and a pip push and a, a count hit with the inverted and possibly a, a counter hit with the, um, with the pips. Now it's not exactly a doubling because you're probably not going to start looping with the pips um, to an extent. You know, there's certain things that you won't try and do. But for a lot of the strokes such as your push, your block, um, your basic little counter hit or a little roll, um, driving, um, easy balls, chopping, all of these things you're going to need an inverted stroke and a pip version. Okay? Now what that does is that, to an extent, that cuts into your double, almost doubles your strokes and the corollary, corollary, the thing that goes with that is then in your training time, you're kind of halving the training time that you can give to each stroke and that's not to be taken lightly because if you've only got say an hour a week, an hour a week to train and you want to twiddle, you're now basically saying well instead of you know, half an hour forehand, half an hour backhand strokes. Well, you can still spend half an hour, but you've now got maybe 15 minutes inverted forehand, 15 minutes pip forehand, 
15 minutes, inverted backhand, 15 minutes, pit backhand. So you've cut your training time on each individual stroke in half. Okay? It's definitely something to be aware of because um, you know, you'll find in terms of grooving your strokes, um, that has, makes grooving them more difficult. So you either have to try and train more to compensate or uh, you have to sort of just be aware of the fact that it will take you longer to um, get your strokes up to that point. Um, there's no real easy solutions to that one. I, I don't think there's any magic bullet to that. Um, it's just one of the things you have to be aware of. Intelligent use of shot selection so that you don't train stuff you don't use. Um, for example, if you're, a, if you're a push blocker standing close to the table and you push on block on the backhand and you attack on the forehand, um, there's not a lot of point for you standing six feet back from the table and practicing your counter loop because you never use it. You would be better served practicing all your close to the table stuff and getting most value, get the most bang for your buck basically out of that. So that can help things to a degree, but it's definitely uh, some one drawback to um, twiddling. Uh, another one is that's very very important is that you have to keep track of which side is which. Okay, uh, not so bad with long pips, depending on where the long pips actually uh, finish towards the handle. Um, some are easier to tell. With my long pips, my index finger can usually just feel the bottom of the long pip, where my index finger goes. So I, I can feel it in terms of which side is which anyway. Though I must admit I don't actually use that anymore to tell. I actually just keep track in my mind where I've twiddled and what to. Uh, and I, I would say probably most players who have twiddled for more than a year or two, you would find that most of us, I think, wouldn't actually need um, the feeling of the pips um, under our finger to tell which side we're on. We just know we've hit a forehand, we've twiddled, and now we're on the pip side there, and the invert. It's just, just instinct and a lot of practice. But it's certainly something you've got to be aware of. Uh, for those of you using anti-spin, even tougher because quite often the anti-spin feels exactly like the inverted. Um, so mentally you've just got to keep track of what's going on. And from your point of view, that can be mentally tiring especially when you're starting to still learn these techniques. Um, so it's got to be considered um, that mentally, while you're learning and mastering this art of twiddling and blending it into your game, um, yeah, it's harder on you mentally. There's more for you to keep track of. And it's not just keeping track of which side is which, it's then making the right stroke with that side. So you've got to make the decision, you've got to know fast enough to be able to do the right stroke. And um, you know, there's no doubt about it that that's not a small um, factor. It's certainly something important to keep aware of. Uh, occasionally also, uh, another drawback is in any particular rally, um, you may find that you will, you'll have a plan, you're working in a pattern, and your opponent won't cooperate, cooperate with you, and you'll maybe, you may have pushed, um, say, with a long pip and looking to fool your opponent and get a pop-up ball that you can twiddle and then top spin with your inverted side and your opponent may not, may not cooperate. You may do the little sneaky deceptive push with the long pips, you twiddle to get ready for your big backhand and your opponent puts it on your forehand. And what do you do now as you're preparing? Do you twiddle back and try and hit the forehand? Do you stay with the long pips and try and roll with the pips? Or do you just push with the pips? That's, a, again, decisions that must be made. And uh, so, yeah, occasionally what will happen is basically your plans will go astray because your opponent won't, won't cooperate. He won't put the ball in the right spot. And you, in a very, very short period of time, have to decide whether to try and twiddle back, try and go ahead but with the pips, or abort the whole thing and go back to a safer stroke with the pips. And again, that's not a trivial decision to make when you're under pressure. Okay? So certainly, again, something to be considered. It is a drawback. Whereas if you're using inverted rubber, it wouldn't matter which side. If they're both similar, you just go ahead. Something you don't have to worry about. 
Uh, yeah, um, another drawback is occasionally you will stuff it up. You'll s basically, you will stuff the twiddle up. It doesn't happen to me very often these days, I'm glad to say, but still, uh, yeah, at least a couple of times a month, I'll be in the middle of a rally and my finger will get stuck, the, the bat won't flip around, or I'll flip it a little bit too far, and I have to try and you know, adjust my stroke with the bat in some really, really strange position just because I, I blew the twiddle and made a mistake. Um, that will happen less as you get more experienced. Um, as I said, now it only really, it, it's um, a rare thing when it happens so that I notice it now. You know, it really stands out when I get it wrong because it does happen rarely. Um, as you're, when you're new to it, it's going to happen a fair bit and it will, you know, you'll just basically be be caught looking like an idiot with the bat sort of halfway around and you trying desperately to adjust your bat angle just to stay in the rally. Um, it's a drawback. Um, so occasionally you'll just basically get get things wrong. So you have to live with that. Um, of course, uh, I did mention this a little bit before but, before, but it is a lot mentally tougher on you while you're learning to integrate twiddling into your table tennis game. Uh, by now, say again, I've been twiddling for off and on 15, 20 years nearly sort of thing of, of my career. It doesn't take a lot of mental effort for me to integrate it into my game in general. I don't have to think a lot about it. A lot of it's automatic. Um, so there's not a lot of mental strain on me, I guess is what I'm saying when I twiddle. To get to that point, um, certainly it's going to take you more than three months. Uh, six months would probably be where you start to feel that the mental strain of it starts to get to the point where you're really not having to notice it too much. One month, after one month of twiddling, um, yeah, your brain sort of can sometimes feel like it's going to explode just because you're twiddling and keeping track of it. Especially for those of you who have a tendency to go a bit overboard and you get out there and you try and twiddle every shot, um, yeah, you can make your head feel like it's just going to because you can't keep track of it all. If you start with a measured approach and twiddle just occasionally, you, know, you play, you play, you play, and now and again you just do one twiddle, go straight back, that's not so bad. Um, but people, being people, we all have a tendency to overkill and get carried away, and suddenly you know, you're there, you're twiddling every single ball, and um, yeah, it can really, it can really mentally tax them. Um, so that's something to watch out for. It's a definite possible drawback. Uh, another problem that you can have, um, especially when you're new to twiddling, um, is it can make make playing another combination bat player um, a real nightmare. So you, as you can imagine, you're there, you've got your inverted and your anti or your inverted and your long pips. Your opponent's got something similar, an inverted and a long pips or an inverted and an anti spin and you're twiddling, and even if he's not twiddling, um, there's going to be all sorts of spins going on, you know, which is mentally pretty tough. If he's twiddling, twiddling as well, it can be an absolute real nightmare match. Um, usually not too entertaining for spectators to watch because there's all sorts of... Um, it doesn't really look like a lot like table tennis, <laughs> uh, you know, in terms of, you know, a big aggressive strokes and, you know, thing. It's usually a lot of tactical stuff as people are flipping and doing stuff. But it can be, um, for someone who's new new to twiddling, um, it can really just basically confuse the hell out of you and you won't have a clue what's going on. Um, because you're, you're having enough problems keeping track of what the heck you're doing and your opponent's doing the same and sometimes it's an inverted going to inverted and inverted to long pips and the long pips back to your long pip. And occasionally it's his long pip to your ante and, you know, God knows what's on the ball after two or three shots. You don't know, your opponent doesn't know, and the ball's going up and down and sideways, and it's just a mess. Um, that can be pretty tough. Um, you'll see uh, in some of the video that I've put up on the site already, there's some video of me playing Paul Pinkovich, who's a sort of almost a legendary, I guess, Australian chopper over decades of play. And we're standing there going basically toe to toe at the table both twiddling and the ball is zipping back and up and sideways and down as we're, we're twiddling and playing and trying to force mistakes. 
and it's um, from a combination of that person's point of view, it's intriguing to watch and it's fascinating to see how he's trying, what Paul's trying to do to me and what I'm trying to do to Paul and where we make mistakes and, and what set, how we set it up. From a person who uses, say, inverted rubber, it doesn't look to them much like table tennis because there's no real, not a lot of pace, there's no big exciting shots, there's just a lot of jockeying for position as we both try and fool the opponent and set up an easy attack that we can put away. Um, but hey, that, that's part of combination bat play when you come up against another combination bat player. But keep it in mind, it could be mentally pretty draining. Um, can take time, yes, I think I mentioned that, it can take time to integrate successfully into your game. You've got to give it time. There is, with twiddling like this, there's no real shortcut. One month, unless you only twiddle once or twice a game, um, you can bring that into your game pretty fast. But if you're going to try and do it so that you twiddle when the opportunity um, presents itself, and twiddle according to certain plans and certain patterns and take advantage of those, that's going to take time. And it's going to be usually in that order of at least three months, more likely six. The problem is most people don't last that long. They get frustrated, they give up, and they go away, they play some back to inverted rubbers, or they stop twiddling and stick to the normal ones. Six months later, they give it another go for another month and then they get sick of it, they stop again. And it doesn't work like that. You have to grit your teeth and stick with it for a good six months. And by that stage, you'll be starting to get comfortable enough that you'll really see um, a, not only a positive effect in your game, but it will become easier and automatic. And that's when things really um, get easier for you and get a lot tougher for your opponent. And, um, but it's getting to that point that can be a bit of a struggle and uh, a frustrating process at times. Uh, also, another drawback with twiddling is you have to develop new patterns, new point winning patterns. Okay? Things have changed. When you're twiddling, what will set up points for you is different from when you're not twiddling or when you're playing inverted rubber. So there's a whole new set of, of basic point winning patterns that you're going to need to learn um, according to your style that will take you time to master. So there's a new set of routines that you're going to need to build into your repertoire of um, weapons, I guess. And um, again, it takes time. Uh, yeah. In terms of also uh, one of the tougher things that is in terms of getting your bat angle right or your swing speed right, um, when you're under pressure. When you never twiddle, it, it's not so bad. You know, it goes to my forehand, it's a, it's a certain angle. It goes to your pips on the back end, it's a certain angle. Once you start to twiddle, when you're under pressure, when the opponent throws that big power loop down the middle at you, and you, you're going forehand, backhand, do I twiddle? You don't have a lot of time to get the right bat angle and play the right shot. Okay? instinct to a certain extent has to take over and until you've been playing a while and twiddling a while you don't have that instinct right and that's the ones where you'll find that you, you will have twiddled say from your inverted to your long pit to play say a backhand and you hit it and your opponent blasts the ball quickly to your forehand then you fit faster than you expect and you go straight to your inverted counter hit and the ball falls off your back what went, what went wrong? Well, basically your instincts took over and put you in the position that you were used to with your inverted side and you didn't have enough time to consciously adjust your bat angle. And that will happen a lot. It does happen a lot in those first, again, those first six months because you, you have more going on. It's not a matter of just getting the bat in the right position. It's now a matter of knowing instinctively which side your bat's on and getting it in the right position. And there's no substitute basically for lots of match practice, lots of training practice on that. But it will come. Um, I'm not saying that I'm perfect every time. There are still times when occasionally I'll, I'll get it wrong. 
but not by a factor of any more than I would get it wrong for a normal inverted rubber now, really. Um, and it's not because I'm especially talented using um, inverted and long pips, it's just that I've used them now for a long time and mentally keep, can keep track of which side I'm on. And so it's fairly automatic to when the opponent loops a big power loop to the forehand, I don't try and counter hit with the long pips, I just let the pips absorb it and play a little chop block instead, or or similar if I'm close to the table. And that's really just um it's just lots of practice and time to develop it. So again, it can be frustrating in the meantime, but stick with it and you'll get there. Um, another con of twiddling is that you may start getting tempted to twiddle for the wrong reasons. Um, I know for a lot of people um, at lower levels, that, that beginning to intermediate level, it's almost like to a certain extent you believe that every time you hit it with the anti-spin or every time you hit it with your long pips, you almost feel like that's going to be my point, my opponent's going to make a mistake. You know, it's almost like you deserve it just for getting, getting the bat on with the anti-spin or the long pips. You know, it feels like, yep, yeah, my point. Um, unfortunately, what that happens is that can tend to bring that instinct to say, okay, if I'm going to twiddle, now what I'm going to do is every ball I can, I'm going to play with my long pip or with my anti-spin. And you start trying to twiddle all the time to get, basically get the anti-spin, get your long pip into play. And that's not a great habit to develop. That's a definite con of twiddling. Okay? There are times when you want to use the inverted side. There are times when you want to use the long pip or anti-spin side. And simply um, trying to always put the long pip or the anti-spin onto the ball is not a winning strategy as you move up the ranks. And really, um, that's what you should be kind of aiming for. There's no reason why any reasonably healthy person um, who's able to stand at a table and, and swing without falling over, there's no reason why you can't move up through beginners, through intermediate, and get start, start getting up towards that advanced level of play. And as you move towards that advanced level of play, simply hitting the ball with the anti-spin with the long pips isn't going to work. It's not going to cut the mustard. We have to be able to do more than that. So it's not a great habit to develop. So it's something to watch for. Um, and again, uh, you may just, with the twiddling, uh, it's very, very easy as you're first learning it to get carried away with it and twiddle just for the sake of twiddling more than anything else. Um, you're there, you're playing a point and you twiddle just because you can, not because you've got a plan or, or because there's any real reason to it, but just because you feel like, oh, it's about time I twiddle and you start to twiddle. Um, again, it's something to watch for. It's not an intelligent use of, of twiddling. Um, we need to have a reason for it. We, we should be working to some plan. Just to twiddle because you can twiddle is not a great idea. And I'm not saying that I never do it and that I never just twiddle without kind of thinking about it because I'm sure I do. Um, there will still be occasions where instinct is just taking over and you're twiddling and then after the point you may think, oh, why did I do that? And it's usually because you know, you're not... Uh, you've let the automatic take over a little bit too much and you didn't actually have any sort of plan for the point and you've drifted away and suddenly you've twiddled without really uh, thinking why. And I guess I'm as guilty of that as um, anybody and it's something I have to still work on myself. So those are possibly, uh, I don't know if they're all the cons of twiddling, all the disadvantages, certainly a fairly comprehensive list, they're not to be ignored, um, but so you, as you can see there are some benefits and there are some uh, disadvantages of twiddling. Now having talked about them, let's get to the nitty gritty, um, which is basically, uh, should you twiddle? And uh, I'm going to take, uh, I'm not really taking a neutral stance on this, my personal point of view is a big firm yes, I think, just about anybody using some form of combination racket like such, um, we should twiddle. Okay? I don't, I, 
really can't see a, a great argument for not twiddling at all. And the reason behind that is basically if you again look through a lot of those disadvantages of twiddling, you'll see that an awful lot of them relate to the fact that during that first period, zero to six months, you know, maybe a little bit longer, that's the period where most of the disadvantages are at their peak. Okay? Because you're learning new strokes, you're getting the bad angle right, you're learning new patterns, you're having to deal with the mental stress of trying to keep track of what's going on, more decisions involved. Once you get past that six months and these, these start to level off and go down, what you'll find is the twiddling gets easier and easier. So it's kind of a, a steep learning curve, levels, and then starts to really fall away. So um, overall, I think that just about anybody who uses two noticeably different surfaces on each side, I think you'll benefit from twiddling the bat. Okay? How fast, how long it will take you to get to that point of benefiting depends on how often you want to twiddle, um, what you're planning to do with it when you do twiddle, um, you know, what sort of strokes you want to apply. If you're only ever occasionally sort of like you're going to play with you long pips on the backhand and once per game, twice per game, you're going to quickly turn the bat, drive an easy ball that gets popped up, you might hit one, or occasionally just turn the bat, push a heavy ball, you know, get a heavy spin, turn back. You do that, well you can probably bring that into your game quite successfully within a month. No problems. Because there's not a lot of mental work going on. To be able to twiddle, say, once or twice, you know, a rally when it's appropriate, that's going to take you three, six months. Okay, there's not a lot of shortcuts involved in that. But the benefit again will be down the track you'll be a lot tougher to play than someone who never twiddles. Um, the only real con I think that you can't get past um, with extra time is the fact that you, you do basically have to have two sets of strokes which cut your training time for each stroke. And I don't think there's any real way around that um, apart from the fact that you can possibly train a little bit longer um, or uh, just over time as the law of diminishing returns kicks in, um, your event, you will eventually catch up with those players who have spent more time on certain strokes. Um, however, I still think all those cons are far outweighed by the extensive benefits that you can get from intelligent use of twiddling. Okay? So, my point of view, my recommendation to you is if you're not twiddling, you should plan to start. If you are twiddling, then if you're already happy with your success, great. If not, then what you're going to need to look at, and what we'll probably look at in future um, videos throughout the course, is you need to look at what style you're trying to play, and then looking at that style, looking at what your current strengths and, strengths and weaknesses are, then forming a plan on how to twiddle, why to twiddle, that works with your current style because um, for someone like myself who is generally a long range defender playing away from the table the reasons I twiddle when I twiddle, why I twiddle is completely different from when I'm playing close to the table um, aggressive play against low players the, the patterns are different everything's different about it and it would be different from someone uh, such as one of yourselves who are possibly wanting to play um, maybe close to the table with an anti-spin wanting to hit both sides aggressively with the anti-spin and with the inverted that would be another completely different set of tactics and techniques um, for, for use of the twiddle and you want to get the right set that matches your style and we will talk about that more in future lessons but, but definitely yes I'd say um, everybody should be looking to twiddle if you don't, I'm not going to be offended. You don't have to take my word for it. Um, I'm giving you my, my recommendation, um, but you feel free to discard it. But I think you'd be better off doing the occasional twiddle at least. And definitely for most styles, I think that twiddling um, is definitely a plus rather than a drawback.
like if you're using combination type bats. Uh, in a second, I think I'll I'll um, come on to the um, how to twiddle. Let's just um, have a little bit of a look at the mechanics of the actual twiddle itself um, from a shake hand inverted point of view. Uh, now, what you want to look at first is, is firstly, if I'm holding too far up the handle, if my thumb is well up the handle, or my index finger is again well up the handle, I'm going to have trouble trying to twiddle that. Okay, so we have to we have to hold our grip in such a way that it actually is conducive to allowing us to get the twiddle done. Okay, now whether that's if this is your normal grip held right up the handle, even if you loosen down, twiddle and come back up, that could work. If you can hold it in such a grip that you can twiddle and not have to change back, even better. But let, let's have a little bit of a look see at what basically goes on with the twiddle itself. Now, as a shake hander when twiddling, um, I prefer a straight blade. Um, I find that with a, the flare blade, um, flaring out from the corners just tends to get in my way a lot. Um, so I've always used a straight for twiddling. If you can twiddle a flare blade, more power to you. Um, no reason to change. But I, I, I personally like straight blades. Now what's going to actually happen here um, when I twiddle is that my thumb is going to clear out of the way. My thumb is really not involved in any way in turning the bat. It doesn't do anything for turning the bat. It really just gets out of the, the way of the blade itself. So as the blade rotates around, my thumb has to get out so that the blade can, can turn. On the other side, again with the index finger, index finger, well, it's really not placed in the right side of the blade to turn because I'm not going to turn it the way the index finger pushes. I'm not turning it, um, I guess if I'm standing this way, if I pushed with my index finger, I would turn the blade that way. But that's actually not how, how a shake hander twiddles. We actually twiddle the other way. So the thumb and index finger, their only real job is to get the hell out of the way and allow your wrist, the wrist turn, and allow your three fingers to do the job of turning the back. So, what I'll do now is just do a few twiddles um, from each side just to allow you to basically see what the heck is going on and we'll, we'll come back and do them in slow motion as well. So from my point of view again you can see basically the thumb is resting on the little cut out piece um, here not too far up the handle. Index finger um, I'm not right down here I'm up where the, um, the pips are on the blade but that still allows me to twiddle quite comfortably. So from this side to twiddle is just really basically a turn, turn, turn. And you can see the thumb for me hardly has to really move. So because I hold pretty low, my thumb actually doesn't really have to do a big job of getting out of the way. If I held the bat higher, my thumb would have to come out of the way to give myself some room. Because I am holding the bat basically with my thumb really just on the wood, not on the rubber, it means that, as you can see there, my thumb doesn't have to do a lot. My three fingers are helping to turn the blade, and my wrist is just giving a little, just a little like that, to help give it some momentum simple as that. On the backhand, just so you can see what's going on with my index finger basically, it's just a matter of the index finger comes out to the side, the back goes around and the index finger comes back. If I do it from the front, and you'll see Actually, I'll do it from here just so you can. You can see my index finger go out to the side as the bat turns around. And again, we'll 
do that a little bit more slow motion. I'll just point a little bit more at the camera here. So just give you a slight view there and a slight view that way. Let's look now just at the slow motion here. You can see uh, from this front view the thumb's not doing very much at all. A little bit of wrist flipping the bat and the fingers, especially the uh, bottom finger getting out of the way there to allow the bat just to turn. Uh, from the other view, a better view of the index finger clearing out of the way and a, an example of how really the, the bottom fingers um, really clear out. Here we go from the front. Again, a good view now of how the index finger really goes out to the side while the thumb doesn't do much at all. And uh, just another perspective, uh, front on, letting you see how that index finger really gets out, lets the bat turn and come around. And uh, now just from the other, other kind of angle where you can now see the, uh, the thumb not doing very much and the bottom three fingers of my hand really loosening up uh, and my wrist just tilting a little bit to help get some momentum. But while I'm sitting here in this particular camera angle, I'll just take advantage of this particular moment just to give you a few uh, general tips about twiddling itself um, and just, just talk about um, some of the general side of things. Firstly, um, I have written this often um, at about.com and my own site and just in general, but when you're learning to twiddle, um, or even if you're an experienced twiddler, um, but someone who occasionally gets caught, you really cannot beat just sitting at home watching TV twiddling the bat. And I think when I write this, I think some people sort of go, oh, yeah, yeah, he writes that kind of thing, yeah, you know, kind of. I'm, I'm not kidding, I really did learn how to do it by basically watching TV and just doing that with my bat. I mean, I, I had no special talent for twiddling or combination bat play. I knew I needed to twiddle, so I needed to get it grooved without having to think too much about it. So once I kind of learned the mechanic, I just had to make it automatic. And just sitting in front of your TV constantly twiddling. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to go for a speed record. Just twiddle, 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 twiddle. Make sure you get back to your grip. Okay? It's not much point doing this and then twiddling and you're in a sloppy wrong grip and you twiddle and you're still wrong. You it's better to go slow, twiddle. Feel that the bat's correct. Twiddle. Feel that the bat's correct. Twiddle. Feel that it's good. Twiddle. 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 And just build up from there. Okay? So we're trying to reinforce correct behaviour, not practice doing it wrong. So it's not much point doing a hundred twiddles where half of them are incorrect. It's better to do fifty good ones, a bit slower and build up your pace. But I'm not kidding, this will work. Okay? It does actually work. Make sure the first time you do it you might feel a bit stupid, but it doesn't really matter after a while you don't really notice it while you're doing it. So it does, it works. Okay. Another thing while you're doing it, every now and again, use your match bat and twiddle. Start with how you'd normally start in a rally. Twiddle and pretend the ball's coming to a side, play the stroke that you would play, and then check that you've got the bat the right way around. So really what that is, is just do a little bit of mental visualisation every now and again, say during the ad breaks, you know, or something like that. But basically pretend you're in a rally, you twiddle, you play the ball, twiddle again to do something, check, check that you're playing the right stroke with the right side, Check that you haven't accidentally twiddled and forgotten. That kind of practice will, will help. You know, mental visualisation of pretending, oh yeah, I've served and I twiddled because I wanted to hit a backhand. I'd hit it to my forehand so I 
play with my pit. That stuff works. Um, it really does. It makes life easier. You know? I can tell you because that's basically how I learned and improved my twill. Now, although I don't need to do that a lot, um, I still can't recommend it highly enough because it's, um, it's a quicker way of getting the job done, especially when you don't have a lot of table time. Yeah. Everyone sits around at home, so at least you can make use of the time. Uh, be patient, okay, yeah, <laughs> that's always a good tip. Um, this stuff is not, twiddling is not a magic bullet. It's not something you can apply to your game and one week later it's seamless and you don't think about it and you're winning points at will and confusing everybody. It doesn't work like that. You start twiddling and you'll do it right a couple of times and you'll do it wrong a couple of times and every so often you know, your opponent will misread it and sometimes you'll misread it and there'll be good days and there'll be bad days and, and you know, sometimes you'll just feel like ripping the rubber off and putting the inverter back on just so you know what the hell's going on. And it, you have to grip your teeth and keep going. Because if you can get through those six months, and by that six month stage, if you've been consistent and you've practiced at home, doing your twiddling, and during a match, you're using sensible, making sensible decisions about it, you'll get there. It'll, it'll suddenly become a lot easier. Maybe three months, maybe six months. Certainly shouldn't be a year. Um, unless you've stopped doing it in the middle somewhere or you're not really concentrating on what you're doing in the first place. So, yeah. But there is that period where you've got to be patient with yourself. You've got to be able to say, I will make some mistakes. I won't get upset at myself for making mistakes. But what I'll do is I'll say, well, I made that mistake. I'll try not to do it again and just work on it that way. And that's tough because, you know, you feel like sometimes during a match you're just giving away points you know, because you're making mistakes with these twiddles. And the tendency then is to say, well, I'll stop twiddling and I'm just, that way I won't make any mistakes. And you won't during that match, but you're also reinforcing that pattern of basically when things get tight, you stop twiddling. And that's not a great pattern to have in your mental mindset um, because you want to, when things get tight, be able to play exactly as if when things when things are going well. Um, otherwise what happens is whenever things get close you're going to stop twiddling, you're going to lose all those benefits, become more predictable and your opponents will take advantage of it and then you'll start, as you get, a, get playing better players, you'll start wondering why do I lose all the close matches and it's because you know, you're, you've lost your ability to play your normal game under pressure. So be patient, stick with it. Um, practice your patterns. You know, that kind of, um, I guess in this overview type of talk, practicing your patterns is a little bit meaningless because you don't, don't really have a lot of patterns yet. And we'll go into that more in, in other parts of the course. I'll start talking at, about different patterns. Not just that I use, but that invert, you know, close to the table players can use. Um, different styles will have. But rest assured that over time, and I'll show you some some anyway. But over time you'll develop certain patterns that allow you to win points. And it, it's almost like just having a routine that, you know, you're playing, he puts it there and suddenly this is your pattern. You do that, he does that, you do that, he does that, bang. And it's not always five shots, it may be a three shot pattern or a two shot pattern or, or whatever. But basically what you'll develop is in certain circumstances, that will slot in and become, that's the right starting point of your sequence and you'll continue the pattern from there. Sometimes it's from your serve, sometimes it's from your serve return. Other times you'll be in the middle of a rally, your opponent will put the ball in the right place with the right spin and you will just go straight into your pattern. And that will happen more. I know it certainly um, happens to me, I have a certain, not, I'm not saying like I have 20 of them, but there are certainly a few patterns of those that I use in certain situations and just slip into my routine. And what those patterns allow you to do is basically let your automatic unconscious take over and take pressure off your brain to an extent and you can just run through the pattern nicely grooved. 
and that, that again is a wonderful thing because it takes pressure off your own mental and physical strain because you can just slip into a nice grooved pattern and that will come. Um, the other thing I'd just kind of recommend um, to start with from an overview point of view is that although it's technically tougher to, to pull off um, a double twiddle twiddle. Now when I say a double twiddle I don't mean um, twiddle twiddle play, twiddle twiddle play. I don't mean that kind of double twiddle. Um, what you need to develop or what I would recommend that you really do work on developing is the ability to say, let's say you're inverted, your red inverted is on the forehand, your pips are on the backhand. Okay? Having a double twi twiddle is important because let's say the ball comes to my backhand, I push in a deceptive way to trick my opponent with the pips. I'm using some of the techniques that I'll show you in, in other videos. But basically what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to push it in such a way that it looks like a chop, but it's actually a float. There's not much spin. So I push it heavy with my pips and I push it across court to my opponent's backhand. Across court. He thinks it's a heavy spin. It's coming across court. Chances are pretty good that he'll pop the ball a little bit higher and he'll put it back cross court at me. So what I do is I do that push over cross court and I twiddle. And I'm expecting the ball to come back to my backhand side. I then, assuming the ball does come there, I hit with my backhand and I would hit it in most cases probably middle of the table or down the line rather than cross court again and I hit and then what I do is I twiddle one more time and because I've hit down the line or towards the middle my opponent's more likely to come cross court and I can bring in the big power forehand. And the reason why this sort of double twiddle tactic is effective is that um, you can use the backhand to set up the attack. And the backhand being what it is compared to the forehand, the backhand is more compact um, to an extent, a little extent easier to hide the direction of the ball. And from close to the table, certainly for a lot of us sometimes, easier to initiate the attack with. So by twiddling from the push to here, I'm giving myself a quick easy chance to set up an attack with the backhand. However, it's not necessarily the power ball to hit with, unless you've got a really good power backhand. So you hit with this side, you straight away twiddle back to your big powerful forehand, and by hitting down the line across it towards the middle, you tend to get the ball back to your forehand that you can bring in the power. Now, it's not a complicated pattern as such, really but what it is it's basically push twiddle hit twiddle power and then you leave it alone you don't need to twiddle again after that okay and it's just that double that ability to basically twiddle to hit it twiddle hit it again twiddle again is what i call a double twiddle if you can master that kind of pattern you can work it off both sides pretty easily and that would be um I would recommend being able to do that, um, but that would usually be for me the limit of how often I would recommend new players twiddle. I certainly don't think you need hit, twiddle, hit, twiddle, hit, twiddle, twiddle, too much. But that double twiddle pattern there that I mentioned is an effective way to basically use the backhand side to easily set up and use the power on your forehand to put the ball away but it does require two twiddles to do so. Um, so that, that can be worth mastering. Otherwise what we're left with is the push, you open with the backhand and you stay there and in that case if you didn't want to twiddle again I would hit cross court with the backhand hoping to get another ball back to my backhand that I could then bring the power in and that would work as well. And this is again it's part of the patterns that you know instinctively for most players if you hit cross court they'll come back cross court you hit down the lines you know even when you hit down the lines they'll quite often go cross court off the down the line shot 
So cross court is usually people's favourite shot. By taking advantage of that knowledge, quite often you can place the ball and twiddle so that you can use whichever slide you're trying to set up for. And again, that's part of the art of twiddling is, I guess, knowing people's tendencies and taking advantage of that. But again, I think that's probably a good enough introduction for you guys. I don't want to sort of like be talking 10 hours on the twiddle, but it's a good starting point. Um, if you have questions on twiddling, um, if you think there's something I didn't explain very clearly, or you just want to just want to sort of go, oh, you know, what did you mean by this? Or you know, can you take that a little bit further? Um, just, yeah, throw me an email, put a comment in um, underneath the video, and um, I'll be quite happy to clarify it further. And that's the whole idea of these videos, really, is to be allow, allow me to put stuff out to you guys, and you guys can come back to me and say, look, we need, didn't get that, don't understand that bit, we need more of this. Um, you know, please explain that a little bit more detail, um, and um, basically everybody benefits from that. So let's um, we'll start with that. Um, anything you want a little bit more detail, tail on, um, just let me know, and um, I'll be quite happy to come back to you with um, further explanations. Um, so um, thanks very much for uh, watching this one today.